What's up guys, Shane Starnes here with Droid Monitor X. I've been using the Galaxy S9 as my main device for the past week, and it's one of the fastest devices that I've ever used. However, is it fast enough to beat the iPhone 10? We've already seen a few speed tests of the Exynos version of the Galaxy S9. I happen to have the Snapdragon 845 version of the Galaxy S9. How does the Snapdragon 845 Galaxy S9 compete with the iPhone 10 when it comes to performance? We're about to find out. This is the iPhone 10 versus Galaxy S9 speed test. Let's go ahead and get started. This is the speed test that you've all been waiting for. We have the iPhone 10 on the left side with the A11 Bionic chip and three gigabytes of RAM. We've got the US variant of the Galaxy S9 with the Snapdragon 845 processor and four gigabytes of RAM. Who knows who's going to win this speed test so far when we're looking at just stock apps and light applications like social media applications it looks like the iphone 10 is doing a pretty good job but the galaxy s9 has the slight advantage it's only when we run into the more intensive applications like these gaming applications where the galaxy s9 is going to slow down just a little bit as you guys can see here on subway surfers the iphone 10 completely catches up to the galaxy s9 and the galaxy Galaxy S9 has actually lost its entire lead. Its whole advantage has gone out the window. As you can see here, the iPhone 10 is also able to load up Temple Run 2 a whole lot quicker than the Galaxy S9. The Snapdragon 845 is supposed to be the better graphics processor, but it looks like the A11 chip is doing an excellent job at processing these graphics with the games. And we're almost finished with the first lap with the iPhone 10, and it finishes at one minute and 14 seconds, and we're off to the races. The iPhone 10 is not having to reload any applications from scratch, as you guys can see. The Galaxy S9, on the other hand, was able to finish the first lap at about a minute and 19 seconds, which is pretty respectable. It was just a little bit behind the iPhone 10, but as you guys can see here, the iPhone 10 is not having to reload any of the applications from scratch. In fact, it even has these games kind of on pause in the background. We're only having to wait a few seconds for them to resume. Meanwhile, the Galaxy S9 is having to load everything from scratch. So even things as simple as Facebook, it was having to load from scratch. As you can see here, Netflix had to load from scratch. All of our games had to load from scratch, so we're having to wait on the Galaxy S9 to just simply load up the games, whereas the iPhone 10 had those games in the background and waiting. The iPhone 10 only has three gigabytes of RAM. The Galaxy S9 has four gigabytes of RAM, but as you can see, the Galaxy S9 is not able to take full advantage of that RAM. TouchWiz has been a poor RAM manager in the past, and what they're doing here is they're trying to optimize the battery life on the Galaxy S9, but it comes at the cost of multitasking and performance. The few seconds here and there that it takes to reload an application from scratch more than likely won't be a game changer in day-to-day -day use, and you're only ever really probably going to see this uh, in a test similar to this. But as you guys can see here, we're wrapping up the final lap on the Galaxy S9, and it comes in at 2 minutes and 40 seconds, almost a full minute behind the iPhone 10, which is pretty surprising. In day-to-day -day use, the Galaxy S9 is incredibly fast, and I really felt like it would hold its own against the iPhone 10. Obviously, there were some RAM management issues with that four gigabytes of RAM. Its speed and performance, and especially multitasking, is a big deal to you. You will probably more than likely want to go with the Galaxy S9 Plus, which does have six gigabytes of RAM. I really wish that Samsung would have just given us six gigabytes of RAM on the Galaxy S9. There's no point in putting an Achilles heel in your device when you really don't have to. I'm not really sure why they didn't just go with the extra six gigabytes of RAM. Were you expecting this huge of a defeat for the Galaxy CS9. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. That about wraps it up for this video. If you like the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. You can find more of me at droidmoderx.com. Follow me on Twitter at droidmoderx. Thanks guys for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.